Happy Earth Day 2022. Here we are. We are at the App Harvest Kitchen. My name is Beth Cronenberg. I'm the owner of Kitchen Shift and a certified nutritionist. I'm here with two incredible leaders of two incredible companies. Good morning, everyone. I am Holly Phillips, President and CEO of Appalachian Regional Healthcare, and I am so excited to be here on Earth Day at the App Harvest Kitchen with my friends Beth and Jonathan, and I look forward to cooking up something healthy and yummy. Yeah, and Jonathan Webb, founder, CEO of App Harvest, and uh, thrilled to continue on this partnership with Appalachian Regional Healthcare as we talk about how food has a connection to not only our health, but the health of the environment and, and how we can eat our way into a healthy world. So excited to be here today and cook up a couple of tasty things. Absolutely. All right, we are gonna start with a smoothie and we are going to be featuring two products from App Harvest, strawberries and some really nice dark leafy greens. So when I build a smoothie, I think about a couple different components. I think about something sweet, some fruit. So today we're gonna use some strawberries and some banana. Um, and then I want to add some micronutrient, that's like your vitamin, and that's going to come by way of the leafy greens. So Jonathan, do you want to... So are those spinach leaves, Beth? Exactly what is that? Exactly. When we're looking, at, there's spinach. Um, it, it's a... Any dark green. The darker right. the color, I mean, that's where... The healthier. Yeah, the healthier. So you look at a, a leafy green, you look at an iceberg lettuce, it's really filled with water. Um, which is, you know, it, it's crunchy, but you know, the darker, the darker the green, the more nutrient dense the, 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 the green is. Lots of fiber, lots of iron, vitamin A, vitamin C. So yeah, it's So I'm it's throwing awesome. this in here. Yep, you're gonna put, right. yeah, go ahead and put about half of that in there. Okay. We're gonna make a smoothie for two. All right. So we're gonna use about a cup of greens. Okay, awesome, next, Holly, you're gonna be in charge of strawberries here, so. Oh, wow. These are some fresh strawberries. She's going to just trim off the ends. Now, what's great is strawberries are coming into season, and if you buy a bunch of strawberries, you can actually freeze those, and then you have them to use for the rest of the year when you want to blend a smoothie. And, and Jonathan, App Harvest is growing strawberries this year, correct? Yeah, so later this year, 2022, we'll have our leafy green facilities online. Leafy green facility online, we'll have strawberries. Um, and you know, I try to always say if you if you can grow it in your backyard, always do that. So I don't have any. I, we took up all the grass where I where I live, and we've just planted anything and everything we could plant. Um, and and we'll be eating a lot from the vegetable garden. But you know, that's you know, first place always go to your your vegetable garden and, and throw stuff in a smoothie. Uh, but if that doesn't work for you, hopefully you can find us in the grocery store at the end of the year with the, the leafy greens. Uh, and the strawberries. Awesome, I look forward to trying those. Now, a little tip on a smoothie. If you are new to smoothies, uh, let's say you are swapping out a sugary cereal for something healthy like this in the morning, you may want a, a slightly sweeter fruit. So adding in banana or even a little bit of local honey would be a great way to sweeten this smoothie. Now, Beth, is a yes. banana also a source of fiber in our diets? It is. It's actually a great source of potassium as well. Yeah, and for me, the smoothie, either in the morning, kind of as a quick to go breakfast, or as a dessert after dinner. But, you know, a really healthy option that's nutrient dense that, you know, kids will like. Uh, and you can, you can take it to go in the morning, and it's much better than the, you know, sugary, high fructose corn syrup cereals. Yes, uh, absolutely. And, and it's, a, it's a great alternative in the morning or a great alternative for kind of an after dinner treat. And Beth, correct me if I'm wrong, but some of the smoothies that we buy at certain restaurants or places are not exactly healthy smoothies, are they? Absolutely, you have to look at ingredient lists. Honestly, most of the time you're gonna be making something at home that's 10 times healthier than what you're buying in you know, a fast casual restaurant. A lot of times they're adding dairy. This is going to be dairy free. Um, they're but also just gonna loads be adding a lot of sugar. sugar. I mean, Tons of sugar. Is, it's the refined sugar. I mean, we're, we're addicted to sugar in this country. And you know, if you're at home and you know what's going in it, you know, you know, you know what you're getting. But you're absolutely right, Holly. If you go out and you get a smoothie uh, you know, at, at a fast casual or whatever place, you know, there's loads of sugar in that. Uh, versus, you know, what you get here, which is a sweet, natural flavoring, but you don't need the preservatives, you don't need that, you know, artificial, you know, refined sugar being added, and a uh, much healthier option. You, you just have to be very conscious that if you are buying the smoothie out, 
you know, who are you getting it from? And is it real food? Right. I mean, we or try is it to, empty calories? That's is it right. Empty yeah. calories and, and is it real food in the ingredients? Absolutely. So what are we doing now? All right, two more components of this smoothie. We want to add some healthy protein and some healthy fats. So I have here a plant-based protein powder, but and we can use one shot just a scoop of that. But let's hypothetically say that we don't have a plant-based protein powder. There are other ways that we can add protein, and seeds are a great way to do that. So Holly, you want to add maybe sure. just like a little teaspoon. These are chia seeds. Oh, yum. Chia seeds. They have protein, they have fiber, and they have healthy fats. So that's another thing we want to think about is healthy fats, plant-based fats. Put some pumpkin seeds in there. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the general theme and what we're seeing here in a smoothie, once you have your couple of base ingredients, just have, we can just have at it. it. Have you can fun. have fun. And, yeah. and, and also, you know, change it. If you didn't like it one day, change it the next day. Super easy, super simple. What did you just add here? These are hemp seeds. Okay. Hemp, Kentucky. There we go. Yeah. All right. So um, go to your local hemp farmer, yeah. get your there hemp you go. seeds. Do you want to add in, this is a little almond butter. And so why are you doing the hemp seed? I know great, why, but let's just Great protein it. source. Yeah. Um, probably the best uh Breast protein from a plant perspective that you can get. Uh, are they easy to find in Kentucky? They are. I, I find them at most grocery stores. You can order them online. Yeah, but go, definitely so check your local. Yeah. Always go to your local farmers market, and if you ask your farmers there, hey, where can I get hemp, you know, hemp seeds or whatever? They'll generally, if they don't have it, be able to point you in the right direction. Local, local, local. If you want the best ingredients. Go That's to a great. farmer's market and ask for a recommendation. Always. Absolutely. And we're so excited this summer. We're partnering with a lot of farmer's markets in eastern Kentucky. They will actually be doing farmer's markets at our hospitals oh, for our employees. Great. So we're super excited yes. about that. Fabulous. The butter we just added, the, the one caution I always have on this too is, you know, the butters, whether it's peanut butter or whatever else, highly... Uh, high amounts of refined sugar added. So you always got to be cautious and careful. Absolutely. When Read those putting, labels. When you're putting, you know, a butter of any type, whether it's an almond butter, a peanut butter or whatever, that if it's just, you know, the, the key ingredient is whatever makes it. If it's tons of sugar, then, uh, you know, maybe steer in another direction. Absolutely. If you have a really good high powered blender, you could actually even add whole almonds. That's actually mm -hmm. what's really cool about these blenders. That's a little flax seed. Let's put that in. Flax meal, incredible source of healthy fats, fiber. Fiber is so good for our diet. Um, great for digestive health. And, and to be clear, you don't need to add any of this in. You could do the, you could do the, the leafy green or the strawberry, the banana. Absolutely. And if you've got some of this, add it in, but if you don't, don't You're in don't bonus worry round with all of this, yeah. yeah. These are also fun when you're doing this with your family. So let's say you wanna get your kids involved, kids, engage a lot more mm. with healthy eating when they take part in measuring and adding these things to the blender as well. No, that's true. I'm a proud mom of a 13 year old son and he loves smoothies when we make them at yes. home and we've been making Beth's recipe for a long time now. I love it. Well, and I still act like a 13 year old. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't measure anything. So I'm in the camp of, you know, just, uh, you know, food is art and in, in, in another way, don't, don't be stressful about it. Just do it. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, change it the next time. Try again. Just yeah. have fun. All right, what else? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and place this on here. We're going to add, this is some almond milk. How much? Um, let's go ahead and pour that whole thing in there. So we're adding a, a full glass of yeah, almond milk. Yeah, probably oil. about just under two cups, I'm guessing. Now, Beth, are there other milks you recommend besides almond if someone has a nut allergy? Absolutely, there are so many. Again, to Jonathan's point with nut butters, there are a lot of nut milks out there. You just want to read labels. In some instances, they're adding a lot of sugar to those. So you just want to look for the, um, you know, an almond, even a coconut, flax milk, hemp mm. milk. But look for something that has a label with no added sugar. Or, or get milk from your local farmer. Again, Absolutely. Any, anything local, anything, anything where you can look someone in the eye and know where it came from. You're, you're in a good place, but it's uh, a big win. Uh, unfortunately, we, we wish you, you had better options at the grocery store and you do have good options at the grocery store. It's getting you better. You just have to be very diligent and look. Otherwise, just go find a local farmer. Agreed. Okay. Okay. Let's okay. blend this up. All right. I'm going to put the top on. We always want to make sure the top is nice and secure. <laughs> yeah. Will you do that? We'll let you do that. Yeah. Here we go. And we're going to just turn this on. All right. 
That was a so how, how cool is this? You don't see the greens, right? It's don't just know. this beautiful pink color. So you can trick your kids. There you go. <laughs> or, like I would do, trick my dad. And not tell him until after the fact. Uh, so you don't even know that you're getting a huge serving of greens. Um, and you're having this nice... It looks like a strawberry milkshake. Thick. It really does. I think it's going to taste like one, too. There's a lot of good stuff in here. All right. All right, I'm going to cheat go. for you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, friends. Cheers. Yeah. Awesome. Happy Earth Day. Eat the earth. Mm, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that really, really. I mean, and, and it goes back to like real food. I mean, we, we look in, you know, we look in this country, what, what is food? You go to the grocery, 80% mm -hmm. of what is in there is processed, it's boxed, it's chemicals. You know, just, it's pretty simple to eat healthy. Real food from real farmers. That's it. You know, eat the earth. Anytime somebody asks, you know, what should I eat? Uh, the simple response I always say is, you know, find stuff that, 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 that grows and it's a pretty good way to go. Food is truly medicine and it's delicious. It is. Cheers. Cheers. And on Earth Day, uh, you know, whether it's your health and, and taking control of your health and what you put in your body, you know, but from us at App Harvest, the, you know, the viewpoint we have is, is you know, food is, is a part of a, these large global health issues. And, and Holly, you can talk about that better than me. But from an environment perspective as well, you know, the health of our environment, the health of our planet, you know, the way we grow our food uh, is incredibly important. Uh, and, and we're going to just have to be more aware, you know, conscious consumers, more aware of what we put into our body and also more aware of the way we grow that food and the way it affects our planet. No, you're exactly right. And, you know, the, the diets that we see a lot of people have with high sugar amounts in their diets, it really leads to so many chronic diseases. And one of the one that one, one of the diseases that truly is pervasive across eastern Kentucky and West Virginia, where we have hospitals and clinics is diabetes. Absolutely. And you can make a considerable change in your diabetes situation with just improving what you're putting in your body on a daily basis. 100%, your, your diet, the way you move your body, getting out into fresh air, to your point, just embracing this earth, this beautiful earth we yeah, have. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, seeds are an unbelievable technology. I mean, plants, you know, again, we look at an iPhone, we say this is technology. You know, the, the plants that grow, they, they are, they are biomaterial, they're tech, you know, use that. Your body, that. There's nothing better to heal and help your body than the stuff out in nature. So, you know, seek it out, make a tasty drink, and, you know, whether it's in the morning or in the evening after after a dinner, that this is a great treat. So thank yeah, you. For, yeah, sure thing. For throwing yeah. this one together. Should we make another recipe? We should. Okay. Why not? Yeah. Let's do it. All Am right. I the we're... only one that finished this? <laughs> no, <laughs> we're still actually, working. We're working actually, on it. I was actually hungry. <laughs> okay. I'm going to grab some tomatoes and we're going to cook with some amazing app harvest tomatoes. So I'm going to come around this way. Look at um, these beautiful tomatoes. I'm going to pluck a so few. So Jonathan, how many tomatoes do you all grow on an annual basis? Well, in, in the uh, first facility we have in Moorhead, we uh, at about peak produ production, we'll be able to get to about 40 million pounds a year. Wow. To put that in perspective, about 4 billion pounds of tomatoes were imported from Mexico to the U.S. last year. So as big as our facility is, it's still a small dent. And, you know, the key thing for us is we want to partner with the American farmer. You know, in many ways, unfortunately, the American farmer, it's, it's been more and more difficult to compete. And right. you look at the U.S. food system now, we import two-thirds of our fruits and vegetables into the U.S. Wow. It's unacceptable. I mean, we're, we're importing stuff. We can do better. We can do better. And, and the good thing is you can vote with your dollar every day. Not only can you vote what goes into your body and, and, and where it comes from, you go to the grocery store, you vote with your dollar. What, you know, what products do you want to put on your table for your kids? What do you want to support? Uh, and be intentional about your dollar. And I think in this day, everybody watches the news or social media and it's all, there's a lot of negativity and, and we feel a little bit powerless. Food, I mean, I wear this fight the food fight hat. 
every single day, whether it's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we have the power to choose what goes in our body, what we buy, what do we give to our kids, and have a conversation like we're having here. You know, at these meals, talk about your food. Where did it come from? And, mm -hmm. and just, you know, back to a family dinner in the evenings or a family breakfast in the mornings. And the App Harvest tomatoes are now available in a lot of our grocery stores in eastern Kentucky. So residents there now have access to local tomatoes and from whether it's from you all or local farmers that's just always the best way to go because we know where they're coming from that's For right kroger walmart costco uh, we've intentionally chosen not to be at farmers markets because we want to highlight the local farmers right. let them sell through the farmers markets but we are at your large box stores uh, with our goal of really replacing the imports that are coming from mexico right now so here we All go. right, let's cook. So we are going to make an avocado toast, but what we're going to feature are these beautiful tomatoes. So tomatoes, this is a little quiz question for you all. Do you know what antioxidant makes a tomato red? Holly? <laughs> I have no clue. Man. Okay, it's called lycopene. Oh, and okay. it is a cancer-fighting antioxidant. It, it's, you're going to find lycopene in most of your red fruits and vegetables. A little fun fact though, when you cook a tomato, it actually makes the lycopene more bioavailable, which means your body can wow. absorb it better. So we're gonna actually cook these tomatoes with a little bit of mushroom, a little bit of um, shallot, onion. But if that's, you know, if mushrooms aren't your thing, you could leave that out. What about roasting the tomatoes in the oven? Absolutely, you could put them on the same grill. Same benefit. Same benefit. It, it's, it's the same thing with the smoothies. So the smoothies are very similar. Just do it, see how it tastes. If you don't like it, do it differently the next time. But yeah, cooking a tomato, you can you can saute it in a pan, you can put the pan in the oven, you could put it and bake it in the oven with, with different ingredients, you could put it in a crock pot. Absolutely. And, you know, we're, we're making the, to, uh, the avocado toast today, uh, but something I love to do with, with extra tomatoes that are maybe a couple days, uh, you know, past ripening, Put them in a crock pot and make it a base of a vegetable soup. Oh, that's a great oh, idea. Oh, wow. That sounds I don't delicious. Do, I don't do anything but cut cut the tops off. Don't even cut them up. Just throw them in. Let them cook down, simmer down. Cut carrots, celery, onions, any extra vegetable you have in the refrigerator. Throw it in the crock pot. And there you go. It's Ready simple... to go. That is something I have learned from Beth over the years. If you have any vegetables that are going bad, just put them in a soup and you will never even know they were You'll going bad. Know. Absolutely. They're perfect. You want them to be a little extra ripe when you put them in the, in the soup. It, it, it adds a sweetness and, and flavor. So it's actually better uh, if they're a little over ripened to, to put in a soup. Yeah. All right, let's turn this. We're going to put yeah. our, um, turn our cooktop on. Get that going right here. Like medium heat. And yeah, about medium heat. Um, Jonathan, if you wouldn't mind, just we're going to drizzle just a little bit of olive oil in that pan. So. In addition to cooking your tomatoes to make that lycopene more available, using a good healthy fat like avocado oil, olive oil is going to also, that good healthy fat is also going to make that lycopene uh, absorb better into the body. So besides olive oil, any other oil we should cook with? Well, I like, um, I like avocado oil, okay. I like olive oil, I will occasionally cook with coconut oil if I'm doing something a little, like a pancake for example. Sweeter. It's a little sweeter. I really avoid canola oil and soybean oil. Those are seed oils, um, I do and tend to avoid Just generally those. less oil. You can do it's less better. oil and yeah. you don't need much, you just don't want it to stick and you want a little bit of flavor but you don't need to you know, dump half the container. Exactly, you want to dump oil. that on in there. I'm going to, I am going to go ahead and just cut up a little bit of this Here. shallot. Okay. So I was saying earlier, the last time I did one of these cooking videos, uh, and this is a, this is an easier, more friendly environment. <laughs> <laughs> Are you I, saying we're friendlier, Jonathan? Yes. So it, it was, with, it, was it, it was when, uh, so Martha Stewart's on our board and the last time she visited Kentucky, we did a little cooking thing Man, oh man, she knows what she's doing. And she's, <laughs> I and hope she, she does. And, and she's, and she's uh, you know, God bless her. I mean, she's in her 80s now. Wow. Uh, but she doesn't mess around in the kitchen. It's like... It's business. <laughs> yeah. It's her business. It's business. So that was, a little, that was a little intimidating. This did, is cooking with friends. We so did, this we is fun. All right, who it. wants to stir? Yeah. Who wants yeah. to stir yeah. the pot? I'll, 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 I'll stir. There but, you go. But, but yeah, Holly, you're, you're far less... Uh, 
I'm far less nervous in this environment. <laughs> I am not a chef, Jonathan, so. And, and, and what was fun with her, we did a no-cook pasta, or, or a no-knife pasta, and we took the tomatoes and just tore them up. No oh, knife, so think if you're camping, or if, you, if you're out in an RV. Uh, a cool, well, here was the funny thing. She said to me, clearly me and Martha have a little bit different of a lifestyle. She was like, you know, if you're out sailing and you don't have a knife, <laughs> I was like, yes, Martha. Or if you're at a campsite, you right, happen yeah. to also not you have, have a knife. knife. So let's, maybe. but uh, That's awesome. it is it is the point of just don't overthink it. You know, a little bit of heat with a little bit of creativity and you can put together a simple dish. So we made a, a pasta um, and water and then we just took our, our tomatoes, we tore them up, we, we, we cooked them a little. Then we threw them over the pasta, and it was it was really so that good. that oh, simple. Wow. This smells delicious. I wish everyone could smell yeah. this. I mean, when you're amazing. cooking with real mm. fresh fruits and vegetables, you just don't need a whole lot more. Um, yeah. we, we're adding a little bit of sea salt and fresh mm. pepper, some olive oil, and the the vegetable stands on its own. Yeah. Now, Beth, are shallots a little sweeter than an onion? Is that why we're using a little sweeter? A actually, a little more mild too. Okay. So they add a nice. Um, it, it's, it layers some flavor, but it doesn't overpower the dish. This. Yeah, we're gonna cut. You want to okay. do this? Yeah, let's do All it. All right, he's gonna cut up this avocado, mm. and I'm going to grab. So um, you want your avocados to be a little. You you don't want them to be spongy, too soft, mm. but you don't want them to be hard. The worst thing, right. If you cut an avocado and it's like a brick. You can't use it. I mean, it's just unusable. You can, if it's too soft, you can still use it. If it's too hard, uh, there's no hope. Yeah, that's perfect. How long do we cook this? We can actually go ahead and turn that off. So when everything just softens, um, we have this thing's kind like of a nice a spaceship, by the way. <laughs> a nice caramelization. <laughs> this is intimidating back um, here. Nice little caramelization with the mushroom, the onion, the tomato. It. It's ready to go. And again, this is going to just, we're going to just top this onto our toast. So, how do we toast the bread? Yeah. So, I actually, if you have a toaster oven, toast it. It's actually uh -huh. already toasted. Did you toast it on this? I actually or stuck it in the oven. Did you put it in the oven? Yeah. Can you try this? We like to, okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Should we put olive oil on the bread to toast it, Beth? Or? So I don't. I usually you, don't. You already toasted the bread. Mm -hmm. And to your point, you can put it in the oven. You can, you can use a toaster. Yeah. You could even toast it in your pan before you do your toast tomatoes. In pan. Yeah. So, just super easy. You don't need all these actually, fancy tools, right? You, you can take just. This. These, this is toasted. Yeah. Okay, Holly, you like the gluten free like, toast, right? I like the gluten free toast. I think it has a great taste. and. Gluten can irritate my stomach sometimes, so I try to be really careful in Absolutely. what I eat. So this brings up a great conversation around bread. Um, some people have noticed when they pull gluten out of their diet, they feel a lot better. So there are a lot of great choices now with gluten-free bread. But if gluten is not a problem for you, um, I would suggest, again, finding your local baker. You're going to find some of that at uh, various 100%. Local farmers, farmers markets, market. yeah. yeah. So the easy answer always is local. And, and if you can find a local baker, or the local baker could be somebody in your neighborhood that knows how to bake, and you ask them, right. hey, can you help me uh, you know, get some good bread once a month or once a week? But bread with color, bread with grains, again, the, the white refined bread. Uh, it's just sugar. It's just sugar, it doesn't have anything for you. And Absolutely. this, you know, anything with, with a little bit of color, brown, grain, something, so we're looking for seeds, we're looking for sprouted grain if possible, and even a good sourdough that has good fermentation. The stomach, the digestive system really knows what to do with that. So, okay, Holly, we're gonna have you, I'm going to, so I don't know if you caught that, we, we cut the avocado in half and then I score it with a knife. So I just run that, my knife through that and then I use a spoon and when it's, Ripen so you don't just need like any this. Fancy tools you really this. don't. Now they sell them, but yes. you don't need one. Okay, so I'm going to. Go, I'll grab a knife for you. So the avocado. Can we talk about the avocado? Let's do it. It's yeah. been all the rage the last ten years. I'm gonna smear that on there. Um, but for those that have never eaten an avocado, what is the benefit of an avocado? I call it nature's butter. So really great, healthy fats. And it spreads like butter. It really does. If it's Incredible soft fiber in the avocado as well. You're going to hear me talk a lot about fiber because it's so good for preventative cancers, especially colon cancer, 
Fiber is very important for a heart healthy diet and can also help with type two diabetes. So a lot of these chronic conditions um, really improve when we increase fiber in our diet. And getting fiber from our diet is far healthier than any of the fiber supplements like Metamucil and others that I I come to mind. Absolutely. Okay, so now we are going to add the tomato compote, the cooked tomatoes, onto the top of the avocado toast. So, oh, yeah. Actually, I can use this spoon right here. And perfect. Again, those tomatoes coupled with that healthy fat from that avocado. So, you know, this is within a pretty short amount of time. I think 30 minutes. You have two things for breakfast that, you know, you can sit down with a family, with kids, have your avocado toast, and have your smoothie on the way out the door. No, quick and easy. The mornings are always hectic when you're trying to get kiddos to school and get to work. So... These quick recipes are super helpful. Absolutely. I, Jonathan mentioned this earlier. I share this with my clients. Breakfast food doesn't have to be eaten one time a day. This mm-hmm. is something that you could make for lunch. Definitely. You could have a this snack. at dinner time. After snack. school snack. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. This is just great whole food nutrition. All right. Perfect. So let's, w- are we, gonna... we topping it with anything else? A little so salt. if you want to top salt it with pepper. a little salt and pepper, a little pinch of that, um, I can grab... You guys, this is finger food, (laughs) so you can just pick it up or I can get a fork for you, but I want you to try that. I hope it's delicious. This looks amazing. And so for me, I got got the mustache, so I'll have this flavor for the next (laughs) hour, hour and a half. That's right. It'll be throughout the day. Good. Great. Another way you could do this, you could just do the tomatoes fresh on top of the avocado. Um, if you don't, that's delicious. If you're not camping, of course, or if you are camping, let's say you don't have a heating source, or you're just out and about, you can quickly just add some fresh tomato. Yeah, just slice them up, put them on top. Absolutely, salt really is a nice, you know, seasoning with tomatoes too, and even like a little garlic salt would probably taste really nice too. You could get some fresh garlic and um, thinly slice that on top as well. Yum. What do you think? Well, I. Great? I think it's amazing. I think it tastes great. Thank you for, for uh, quarterbacking with us. And then, Holly, again, just the, the concept of, of food and the importance of food uh, and, and, and the connection to our health. Um, for you as, as the CEO of, of Appalachian Regional Healthcare, you know, how much have you seen that as is, is, you know, instrumental in your work going forward and, and the conversations around food and health? Food and health our partners just like working with app harvest has become a partnership for us and right now we're really focusing on improving our employee health and working with you all in partnership to do so because we really see so many chronic illnesses in our own workforce and i'm sure you see these too jonathan and whatever we can do whether it's provide quick and easy recipes providing access to fruits and vegetables by hosting farmers markets. We want our employees to be as healthy as possible. It makes them happier employees, more, you know, I mean, more improvements in mental health as well, clarity. So it's just a great partnership and we're super excited to work with you all. Great. Yeah, and the, and the one thing I would say to close out with, real food, you know, where does it come from? Find your local farmer. If you can look somebody in the eye and they could tell you they, grow, they grew it or it, 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 it was uh, produced on their farm, then you're in a good place. And you don't have to overcomplicate this. The no. best place to go is your farmer's market. Find the weekends where they're at. You know, support your local farmer, but support yourself and the yes. health of yourself and the health of your family and eat real food. It's not hard uh, to do to, to create a good flavorful dish and, and don't be overwhelmed with, you know, following the recipe. Just go in, do it, have fun, eat real food. I agree. It's a, the Cooking in the kitchen is an experience. Mm-hmm. We want to make it fun. And dumping stuff in a blender and making a healthy smoothie is fun it's and part easy. Of it. Absolutely. So to Earth Day 2022, thank you all for being in here. Uh, yeah. This is the first time we've cooked in this in this App Harvest Kitchen. Oh, it is beautiful. So fun. thank you for hosting us. This yeah. has thank been you. a great morning. Thank you both of thank you. Thank you for being, being my guinea pigs on these recipes. And, Delicious. Uh, yeah. Cheers. Fabulous.